Hi guys, Kieran from Out of Smart here. Today we're going to do a rack walkthrough of this one. Uh, so this is a 44U rack for our Yorkshire refurb job. Um, we've got two of these on the job. So this one's the AV rack and then on site at the minute, which has been installed by some of the other guys, is the network rack. Uh, so that's where we're housing all of our termination, so cat sixes and everything going around the house where all the speaker cables and that will terminate into. But we'll have a quick talk over this one today and then we'll spin it around and have a look at the back. So if we start down the bottom, we've got our UPS. Now on this job, we've got two of these. Uh, one for the network rack and one for the AV rack. They're massive, as you can tell, for you. Uh, and I think they're about 2000 watts each, so they'll run for ages, as with all of our jobs to get a UPS. Um, not just for battery backup, the runtime on them is not really that important, although, although on this job it will be quite high purely because of the size of them. Um, it's more about providing clean power to all the components in the rack. Um, next up then we've got the Anthem AVR. Um, so that's powering a 7.2.4 Bowers and Wilkins system in the media room. Uh, and then we've got two triad rack amps, which are powering the subwoofers in that room. Uh, moving on from those, we've got four triad eight channel amplifiers. They're powering the multi-room speakers around the house, which are a combination of some episode all weathers down in the pool. Uh, triad IC83s in most of the ceilings and I think we've got a couple of Triad OD26s outside in the garden as well. If we move up a little bit, above that we've got a Pulse 8 uh, 1632 audio matrix and um, so that's going to take all of the audio inputs from our EA5 um, and route them out around the house to wherever the client will be playing their sources which can be Spotify, uh, Apple Airplay, Tidal Napster, Amazon Music, you name it. Above that, we've got our video matrix. So on this one, we've got a HD Anywhere M Hub S, and that is doing eight inputs and eight zones. So any of the eight inputs can be routed to any of the eight zones around the house. Uh, the interesting thing with these M Hub S's as well, the S stands for stackable. Um, so you can stack these up to, I believe, 96 zones, which is wild. We've left space above to stack another one in just in case the client wants to add any more zones of video around the house because it is quite a big house. So we put the blank in, just, you know, brand everything, uh, put our stamp on it. And um, then also it's got our contact details on the site ID and the asset ID. So if the client's having any issues, our details are there. They can call us or email straight from there. Site ID is uh, for our backend system. And then the asset ID is we use that in the back-end system as well. So, say for example, if in a year's time when this is getting serviced under the aftercare contract, an engineer can come in and scan that asset ID there. It'll pull up all of the information of all of these devices and give them checklists so they know what they're checking off. Above that, we've got an Atom PDU. Um, so that's managed PDU, which al allows us to remote in and reboot devices should we need to. It's also got a temperature sensor on that one, which will monitor the temperature in the rack and give us notification if anything's getting too hot. Above that, we've got some shelves. So they're just where the, the sources will sit that will feed into the video matrix. So that could be SkyQ, Apple TV, Nvidia Shield, anything like that. Um, as it stands, this client's not decided what they're having yet, which is the case on most of our jobs. So we tend to just run a couple of HDMI's to every shelf, a couple of datas, and then make sure we've got power on the shelf. So we're covered for any scenario, really. Uh, above that, we've got a 2U gap at the minute um, that's where the cctv nvr will go then moving up we've got 24 port rear switch which is just providing data to all the devices in this rack and it's uplink is on fiber on this job we've got fiber doing the uh, uplinks for all the switches uh, the reason we've done it on this one is because the sfp ports on these are a separate backplane to the rest of the ports so the uplinks don't share any of the uh, bandwidth and then we've got rea5 um, which on this job we're using for a bit of I.O. So as I see when we take the back off and spin it around, there's some serial connected to that doing the DMX engine. We'll have a bit of I.R. if the client decides to put Apple TVs in or anything like that. Um, and then yeah, it's doing the audio. So planet waves down to the audio matrix to feed those sources around the house. And then above that, we've got our CA10. Um, which is running director on this job. Just Control 4's best processor for any big jobs where you're looking at sort of 100 plus devices. That's what they recommend. So we'll spin it around now and have a look at the cabling in the back. 
So you may notice the anacondas coming out the top on this one. We don't do it often, do prefer them to come out the bottom. It's a bit neater. But as you'll see when we get down the bottom, those UPSs are huge and there's just no way we could get the cables out the bottom of the rack. Um, so we brought them out the top. Has created a bit, a bit of an issue uh, with access to the rear of those devices at the top, like the CA10 and the A5. But should we ever need to get to the back of them for servicing or anything like that, we can just take these, this brush plate will just slide down the anacondas um, and you can get your hands in there, no problem. We've got the um, 24 port switch, just got all the data's going into the back of it. We've then got a few cables, just cable tied up here out of the way. That's the power data and HDMI output for the MVR, which we talked about. So then we've got our source shelves, uh, three of those, a uh, six way power supply, so two for each shelf. Um, at the minute we've got the DMX engine plugged into there which is on the side of the rack. We've then got the managed PDU, so again that's powering everything in the rack and allows us to remote in and reboot anything should we need to. Then we've got that 2U gap if the client wants to add another video matrix. We've then got the M Hub S that is in. Eight inputs which is coming from, uh, we've got an output of the A5 which allows us to do on screen control. Uh, so basically replicate the touchscreen GUI on a TV in the house using one of the remotes to control it. Uh, we've got a video output from the CCTV MVR so the clients can view the cameras on the TVs if they want to. And then yeah, the other HDMIs are all coming from the source shelves. We've got two on each shelf. So again, that can be Sky, Apple TV, Nvidia Shield, anything like that. The Cat 6A outs, um, which will carry the video to the displays around the house. Uh, then we've got the audio matrix, which has got an absolute mountain of planet waves plugged into it. Uh, it took quite a while to dress those neatly. So then we've got our four triad amplifiers. Um, again, they're stacked really tightly just because of how much kit's gone in this rack. Ideally, it would have been two racks, but as, as is the case with most jobs, didn't have the space for it. So it's all gone into here. Um, I think I've managed to get them all connected up quite neatly. Well, I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Beneath those triad amplifiers doing the multi-room audio, we've got the two sub-amplifiers. So they're taking a coax input from the AVR and then speaker cable out to the subwoofers in the room. Uh, then we've got the Anthem AVR, which is, as, as I said earlier, 7.2.4 Bowers and Wilkins system in the media room uh, with a Sony uh, laser projector. And I think it's a 130 inch screen. Beneath that, we've got what we call our dumb PDU. So that's just powering any devices that we don't need on the UPS. So amplifiers, AVR, not anything that's not critical um, to the house running basically. Uh, so if the power went out or there was any surges or anything like that, it, these devices don't necessarily need the same level of protection. And if we did put them on the UPS, the power draw on it will be so high it just sort of negates the point of even putting one in um, and then yeah as i say we've got the ups down the bottom at the minute because it's on uh soap test in the rack lab it's not actually connected up we've got the battery taken out of it um and we're just looped through on the pdu here at the minute but yeah as i say it's stupidly deep like it comes to the back of the rack to the point where we've even had to use right angled iecs just to be able to get the door on Thanks for watching guys, make sure you like and subscribe if you liked it. Um, this rack's going to site soon and we will be filming that, so keep an eye on the socials for any updates.